open up the Revit model I've given you. Um, you can see it's a warehouse. I'm going to show you a few things in um, Revit which can make it a little bit easier for you to use this model in Costex. This is called pre-processing the model. I might strip out some information or at least hide some information and I might add some other QS ID or QS information to make it easier to maybe extract the quantities. Um, I don't necessarily, because this was given me given to me as an architectural model, I don't want to necessarily delete anything here. So I'm going to keep this as a default 3D view. What I'm going to do is copy it. So I'm going to select view at the top here. And if I duplicate the view in the create field, so duplicate view, and you can see I've got a copy down here in my project browser. I'm going to right click that name and I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to simply just rename it 3D without sight and click OK. Now I can get back to that 3D view by just double clicking it or I can click the default 3D view at the top here and that essentially will bring me back to my default view. But I'm just going to go back by double clicking my 3D view again and I'm going to hide some information that I don't need for the moment. I'm not going to delete it, it's just going to be hidden from this view. So I'm going to right click one of the site walls here, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to select all instances in this view. And then I'm going to right click it again and I'm going to hide in view those elements I've selected. Do the same for the topography. This time there's only one of them so I don't need to select all instances. I'm going to hide in view elements. I'm going to do the same for the plants. I'm going to do the same for my kind of apron, perimeter apron. I'm going to do the same from the car parking spaces and these two items. Okay, I completed that action off recording. So we're back to uh, our 3D without the site. Again, if I click the default view at the top, I can see that that information is still there in my default 3D view. So just going back, I'm just going to make some adjustments here. I'm going to make sure in the actual view properties that the detail level is fine, and it is. I'm going to make sure that all the information in terms of the visibility graphics are checked, and they are. However, um, you can uncheck some of these elements or some of these categories of objects. For example, if I wanted to uncheck and hide doors, and I wanted to do the same for, let's say, walls, and click OK. You can see that those elements are hidden, but walls and doors. Um, in this case, now I don't necessarily want to do that, so I'm going to click doors again and scroll down to the end and click my walls and click OK. And I'm going to make sure that in my graphic display options, that in fact, drop down, it's a hidden line. So just those three actions um, just make it that little bit better. Um, for, uh, for well, I suppose, taking off quantities or, and, and, and seeing that information in Costex. Um, in fact, I should have done it in here, so fine um, and hidden. Okay, the next thing I, I'm going to do is make sure that the project units are correct. To do that, click the Manage tab over here in Settings click project units and my length area and volume and measurement I want to click those uh, the units are in millimeters I'm going to round it up to three decimal places it can be two or three make sure my unit symbol is millimeters and click OK the reason being that this information will come in with units rather than just as a number into Costex again rounding three decimal places places meters squared and then volume three decimal places meter cubed. So just again those three items. Um, this is important in terms of at least for <coughs> rounding to two or three decimal places because if it was round to a whole number it would just round up or round down. I might not get the exact quantity I'm looking for and if I'm adding a considerable amount of objects together it would make a difference in terms of its overall measurement. So I want to at least have the two or three decimal places. So again click OK and I've changed those project units. I'm just going to show you um, some more things here that are quite useful. I'm going to select one of the walls and I can see that one of the walls there is called warehouse brick. Now this is 
pretty good and pretty applicable um, and useful to do when you're actually measuring objects with layers. So maybe your ground floor or your you know buildup of your external walls or the buildup of your roof or your floor. In this case, in terms of the naming convention, it doesn't tell me a whole lot. When this object or when this building information model is exported into Costex, that is shown, that wall is shown as a solid object. And unless the name in terms of how it's built up, if I click edit type, click structure here, and I can see that that wall is brick, 100 meter brickwork, air barrier, insulation, and an inner leaf block work. Now, unless, unless there's something in the description, one of the parameters of, of that object, um, I won't know the buildup of that wall. So it's quite useful to possibly change something that's quite generic in terms of warehouse brick to the actual makeup or description of that wall. So to do that, I'm gonna click edit type. I'm gonna click rename here in the type properties. And I'm gonna type in the makeup of that wall. So it was 100 brick, it was 50 air, it was 60 insulation, and it was 100 block. So I'm going to click OK, click OK again, and anywhere I suppose in the model that we had a warehouse brick, we now have this basic wall with its sandwich layer construction. So in fact, maybe if I double click the ground floor, select that wall there, I can see that it's changed. So anywhere that that was applicable, that will change in the view, in the model to its new name. Now I can do it there, but I can also do it in any available field that has a kind of a text parameter. So in the identity data there, what's available in terms of our property information, I could actually have typed in that description. I could have done it in my edit type, scroll down, and you might all, you might see it a lot of the time in terms of a description in, the, well, the description field there. So there could be something generic in terms of the type name, and in the description field there, something a little bit more detailed. It doesn't really matter so long as that information is in there. So I'm just gonna click OK. I prefer to see it in the name because there is an option in Costex, and you'll see it later on when you get to it, to export a BIM template and use kind of the Revit naming conventions um, in terms of to get your quantities. If that is a generic name, it's kind of very hard to see at least straight away exactly what the makeup of that wall is. Now you do have another option, just clicking back on my 3D model. I do have another option here if I click my wall and if I hit up here in the modify walls, once I've selected it, create parts. Now what that does is essentially breaks down that solid wall as an assembly into a number of different sandwich layers. So if I do that for every element um, or every object that I think you know has a kind of a sandwich construction, my floors, my walls, my ground floor, my roof, for example, and it gets exported with those parts created um, I will see those individual parts in Costex and I could run quantities and get quantities for those individual parts. Now that is useful maybe if you're doing a build of quantities, but I actually rather see um, it in the naming conventions rather than and come in as a solid object. It's a little bit easier to use um, rather than four or five different quantities of the same of essentially the same quantity for four different items. So I'm just gonna undo that, what I did in terms of create parts, but just be aware it's there. Another thing is quite useful in terms of measuring maybe floor finishes or looking for room areas or ceiling finishes is I'm just gonna click one of my 2D plans. Um, again, in this one, I just wanna, wanna scroll up here in terms of the properties. I'm gonna change the detail of visibility to fine and I am going to change the graphic option to hidden line, which is already is. And again, you'll see that that solid coloring has changed the actual layer, which is a bit more useful in terms of seeing exactly what's going on there. Um, I can see that each of these rooms are, well, designated as a room and given a name. 
Um, this one, for example, if I needed to change it, if I needed to change the name, I could do so there. Um, reception one or just reception. Click insert. Um, I can do it by finding the crosshairs of the room and changing it in the room property or the room identity name ground office so if I changed it there it would change there um, if I wanted to create a room I have room names here and they're all designated rooms for every room on the ground floor but this one isn't designated a room so I'm just gonna click view or is it architecture sorry architecture and I'm gonna click in room and room and area the room tab and I'm just gonna hover over I give them this kind of crosshair click somewhere on that room there hit escape and now it's called room let's change the name of it to store click apply now you'll notice that I have a couple of quantities in there those quantities will come in with that information into costex uh, but I don't need both the meter squared measurement and the square foot measurement so double click on the actual identity on the name edit type you can see that's room tag edit type and change it from name number with both areas just to name number with metric click OK do the same for the storeroom edit type drop down room area metric so there I have names they're all designated certain names and there actually are rooms because if you hover over somewhere you can see that once, you, once the crosshairs come up and you click those crosshairs you can see that that room now is highlighted blue and it's designated a room so that will be given an area when it comes into cost it's quite useful for again as I said floor finishes I can see my ground floor plan and this would be evident in the first floor plan as well that I have a section av available so to see what that section looks like I can double click on the label heading and there it is there or I can scroll down to my section um, my section section and double click on it I can add more sections if need be let's say for example I want to put a section across the building in the other direction I would click view and click section left click and then drag it across and click on the other side just hit escape and now if I double click on that section heading there is that section available to me just drag down the project browser and there it is section 9 this essentially is default to a course level of detail I'm gonna click fine click apply so I can see the detail in those cavity walls and in those floors you can also move these sections so if I scroll back up to my ground floor plan there's the section 9 that I created if I just click that section and hover over the actual section line once it's clicked and once I get the crosshair click my mouse left click hold it down drag it to a new location release and then maybe double click the section head and see where the location of that section is in relation to it's still section 9 but it uh, has a new location <clears throat> so that concludes uh, this particular video there is follow-on videos in terms of pre-processing Revit for quantities of AM purposes but this one essentially shows you some kind of basic ways of filtering data hiding data maybe even copying views and making them more applicable to what you might need as a quantity surveyor downstream. In the next couple of videos, we'll show you how to add QS codes and create schedules. Thank you.